Wow. So Tact Opus Destiny's final episode just aired, and I have a lot of words to say about this series, especially in this episode in particular, because this was a cluster luck of bad stuff. This is pretty much fate. Like, let's be honest here. This last episode is pretty much Fate Zero and Fate Route combined. They weren't even shy in ripping off this story at all throughout most of it, and they surely weren't shy shy ripping it off for their final climactic episode. I do want to say before we get into this, if you are a fan of Tact Opus Destiny and you don't like people criticizing it, this may not be the video for you because this episode, oh boy, it's not good. So let's go ahead and get right so into it. So if there's one thing that Tact Opus Destiny is always good for, it is typically pretty good animation and art. And that is pretty much what we see at the beginning of this episode, which I thought, you know, based off what we saw here, I was like, oh, so this is, you know, going to be smooth sailing for this episode. There's going to be a cool fight and then it's going to end. You know, we're going to have a fun time. It didn't go that way, but really good animation between the fight with Tab, uh, not Tact, Destiny and Orpheus. Sorry. Just really good stuff here. We learned that Orpheus can basically regenerate basic, basic bad guy stuff. Once again, straight out of Fate Grand Order. Just tanks a bunch of blows, regenerates pretty much immediately. Then they have to go, oh, we have to finish her off in one climactic final blow. Super generic stuff here. This has already been done a billion times. Had me rolling my eyes a little bit, but it was still pretty cool for what it was worth because Orpheus kind of has a cool design. It's kind of grown on me a little bit. I don't mind it at all. I think it's decent, especially for a final boss like Orpheus. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, once again, straight out of the Fate Grand Order playbook, which, you know, this is done by the same company, Anyplex. So no wonder they just decided to do Fate again for a mobile game because they thought probably, oh, well, you know, if we have another Fate where we just literally take the story of Fate and we do it with different characters and a moderately different idea of just tacking on different names for the terms, yeah, we can cash in and make Make even more money. I mean, we have to remember that Anyplex is owned by Sony, guys. It's a big corporation. All they want is money. So, <laughs> this isn't really, this is, this is where the episode starts to fall off the rails here, I think. But they blow the top half of Orpheus off and from there, it just kind of really falls apart. Destiny and Tact kind of go their separate ways. And then we see a flashback. Flashback to Sagan and how he fought the D2s initially. I guess they lost and he touched a crystal and he went crazy. It's not really explained too much why. And then we learn that he's like pinned to these crystals because Tat goes there and that Orpheus will support Sagan no matter what because the world cannot be saved. So she, that's how she fights for the world. I, it, basic bad guy stuff, super duper basic stuff here. I'm evil because I'm evil and that's just the way it is. There's a little bit of romance going on there between Orpheus and Sagan, some weird love thing, a hint of that, which to be fair, that's kind of interesting, but not really anything of substance, in my opinion. So tact, talking to Sagan makes me realize a lot of things here. Well, 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 well actually, first we, before we get into that, his hair partially turns white. So that's another, <laughs> that's just Shiro Emiya, guys. That's Shiro Emiya. Come on now. And he's, I, I think Sagan says, here's the thing. The dialogue in this episode was so confusing and in many different ways. He says, I think something like, Tact, you plan to bring all the D2s here to seal them. And you're wrong or something like that. Or maybe that's what Sagan was. It, listen, confusing dialogue this episode. Confusing. So his hair turns white because he's, I guess, starting to die. Like, but like a lot now because of because of God, people driving by in their cars because of what's going on with him and destiny like eh. and then Sagan says he likes pain and he is literally Kire Kodamine I expected Sagan at that point to go rejoice but he didn't because I don't know <laughs> he should have. This is literally fate. This is a combination of fate zero. This Sagan's literally Sagan's whole story. This episode was a copy and paste with minor tweaks and changes of Kide Kotomine from fate zero. Literally the same storyline, literally the same. He goes crazy because he figures out that, oh, I like pain and I like suffering. 
I'm not technically evil, but I am. Kine Kotamine, guys. That's it's who Sagan is. Rejoice. I like saying that. It's nice to say. <sighs> well, the second half of the fight between um, Destiny and Orpheus is really good. They start to just fist fight each other. By far the coolest fight of this series. Jo like, not it, I'm not even joking. It didn't really have a resolution, but just in terms of pound for pound, like animation and like how invested I was in the fight and how good it looked. This was absolutely a, a, a climactic battle deserving of the, f the final episode. It's the best fight, in my opinion. They just start to trade blows, just punching each other. It starts off with a cool double punch. And then Destiny is just, man, she's just, just wailing into Orpheus. So much so that she punches Orpheus in the gut and just blows a hole through her. This was some phenomenal art and animation here. I love this. The sound effects were good. The dialogue in, the, in this fight was really good. I pretty much loved everything about it, except it just doesn't have a climax. We don't really see Destiny take out Orpheus. Also, it is kind of underwhelming in a sense that she just kind of dies, even though she's the big final, you know, fake Grand Order boss. But I still, I mean, other than that, the animation was good enough for me to where I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll take that. And maybe I'm compromising on that, probably, but here we are. I guess I'm compromising. Still good though. I don't know, compromise or not, still good. So yeah, Destiny defeats Orpheus off screen because, you know, we don't need payoffs. Sagan dies because Tax takes Destiny's sword and kills him? That's okay, all right. Uh, I guess the D2s are defeated, but it doesn't seem like they are based off what happened in the, the last I guess post credit scene? Talk about that in a moment. Putley goes against really the ending of this this series. But here, I'll explain why I say, I say that in a minute. But and we uh, get the Evangelion ending. So let no, literally. Literally the Evangelion, the end of Evangelion ending. Like they're on the beach, Destiny attacked. That's straight up Evangelion. Like it, it didn't go down the same way. Like, well, I guess it would have to be based off their positioning in this sense. Like, Destiny wasn't strangling Tact or anything like that. T Tact's just like, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Destiny's like, okay, Masta, or Maestro, sorry. I don't want to get these things confused. Because it's very easy to get them confused because Destiny confesses her love to Tact and then withers away like Saber in Fate Route. This is the Fate Route. This is the Fate Route ending. The Fate Route. This is a route! Are we not seeing this? So Destiny confesses her love to attack because, because I I don't know. Because I guess they had to have Saber confess her love to, to Shiro again, but with different names, different character designs that still are still vaguely similar. This is li <gasps> literally, Tax arm, I just realized this, is heaven's feel Shiro, literally. Shiro gets like Archer's arm in Heaven's Feel and has the same red arm. Th yeah. This, is, yeah. this is literally fate. This whole series is fate. Fate in like little bits of Evangelion, Symphogear, and Grand Order, which is also fate. It's fate. This is Fate Stay Night, the franchise. Amalgamized into to a. The, it's like they took the, the skeleton of Symphogear and they took all of the cool shit from fate and they said let's cram it together let's see what they got i don't know why i'm vince mcmahon all of a sudden but it's literally what they did literally so i guess destiny just withers away disappears because seba that's why and then the end credit scene we get to see anna with short hair she's cute pretty cool like anna we all like anna i don't, I don't think anybody here hates anna no reason to Nobody hates Destiny, nobody hates Tact. Nobody hates any of these characters besides maybe Sagan, Hell and Heaven. Three, three of the worst villains of this year, without a doubt. We all love Valkyr, that's for sure. We all love Valkyr, I love Valkyr. Anna has short hair now. She joins Symphonica. Okay, cool, that makes sense, right? Right? Problem. <laughs> She does it so that she can one day make music free again or something for people. Haven't, did we just kill the D2s? Did we just get rid of the D2 scourge? Why are we still fighting the D2s if the D2s are dead? And why are we still fighting for music if the D2s are gone? Are you telling me that Tact lost Destiny and it's implied I guess he's in a coma? That he's been put into a coma? 
to 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 defeat Sagan and 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 Dommy Mommy to essentially for nothing? Oh, what? I don't. <clears throat> and then the post credit scene. It's a very short. If you missed it, don't go back and watch it because it is some cringe. It takes place seconds after my alarm's going off again. Got it. Sorry about that. It takes place seconds after the ending. It's basically just a continuation where Anna's still walking and she holds the necklace that was it that was from Destiny that that was in Tack's hand at the end of their Evangelion scene. And she <sighs> and Anna becomes Destiny. She becomes a music heart. Is that what we're applying here? She's in the outfit of Destiny. And that is how the series ends. What was the point of this show? What was the reason for any of this happening? This was a train wreck for the last couple episodes. I enjoyed the last episode. Like, I didn't really complain about it much because, yeah, it was like one of the worst episodes in the series, but I, I, this is crazy. It's crazy stuff happening. It was cool. It was fun. This wasn't fun. This, this is, there is a certain kind of crazy that's fun. This is not the crazy fun. This is the poorly written, not making a lot of sense, basically just a gigantic rip off of fate. Not fun, not fun. I don't like this episode. I thought this ending was, it wasn't the worst ending because it did have some good stuff in it, but it's kind of the worst ending in regards to this series. Like how Mashoko Tensei this week had the best ending it could have gotten for its in context of its series. This is the worst ending this series could have gotten in the context for its series, despite it technically not being the worst thing I've like ever seen. Promised Neverland, <coughs> Promised Goofy Land, Sasuke's Fever Dream is, that's an inside joke, possibly is still, the, it, no, is still the worst ending of this year. Without a shadow of a doubt, still the worst ending this year. Yes, that aired this year in the year of our Lord, 2021. This tried to give a run for its money. It didn't even come close to being worse than TPN's ending, but good God, good God. There is no originality in this series. There is no original thought put into it. It was haphazard. This is obviously just a way to promote a really shitty mobile game that hopefully nobody buys into because it's Sony, it's Aniplex, they just want your money. They want they want you to gamble again for more money because I guess Fate Grand Order and their $6 billion a year uh, gross income is not enough. So the rich get richer, the tax get tacter. I don't know, I don't know what, that was terrible. Probably shouldn't have said that. Either way, either way, worst ending for this series. I don't recommend Tact OP Destiny to anyone. This is not a series that you should be watching. If the ending was solid, yeah, I'd give it a recommendation. This, no, not at all. This series is, is at best mediocre. It has some really good episodes, to be fair. Episode two, really good episode. Episode one, decent episode. Episode two is probably one of the best episodes. Probably the best episode, still. It had everything that I wanted from this series, and from there on, it did not capitalize on literally any of it. It literally just became a fake clone. The series sucks. That's just the way it is. It sucks. It's mediocre. It's not good. Like, it's got good stuff, but it's just not good. And if you liked Tact OP Destiny, I'm glad. Glad you enjoy it. I'm sincere in saying that. I'm not saying because I don't like it. People that liked it, you know, shouldn't like it. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that if you were watching with me through along this series or you're coming by for a review or something, which by the way, if you guys want a review of Attacked Opus Destiny, please leave a comment down below if that's something you're interested in and want me to see, or you want me to see, you want to see, please leave a comment down below. But either way, this series, not good, not good. And I'm sorry if you enjoyed it. I'm not attacking you or anything like that. So don't get too mad. Like we cool, right dog? We cool. But this series, no. No, I, I personally cannot recommend this series. It's not good. But I want to thank you all for joining me on this journey of Tact Opus Destiny. Thank you for watching all 12 episodes with me. If you did or if you didn't, you just came in to listen to my voice or something. Thank you very much. I appreciate that more than you'll ever know. And I'll see you guys the next season when we cover Attack on Titan. Hopefully the case study of Anatas. We're going to do a couple of really cool series next season that I think everybody here is going to really enjoy. So I do want to ask this. If you've made it all of this way and you haven't subscribed yet and you 
you like my videos? Well, you've watched 12 of these, so maybe hit the subscribe if you're interested. While we wait for next season, I guess, watch some of my Tact Opus Destiny videos if you missed any. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.